Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks, Tracy here and this is an, a follow-on tutorial from my granny square. Um, I can't remember what number we're at, six or seven, something like that. Um, and as usual, I will do a left and a right-handed version and up the top will um, you get this little line that if you click it will take you to either the left-handed or the right-handed depending which one you're on and it will always tell you so that's how you can switch from one to the other or at the end of the video when all the videos pop in to sort of see what you can watch next there'll be a playlist with uh, one of them will be left-handed one will be right-handed and you can then um, go back and do part one if you're just coming in for the first time um, because this is actually following in a sequence and a complete course so this one is a follow-on from the granny square which we started off uh, last time now I'm still at the point where I left off and I'm going to keep that one um, and put it aside for now because I've been asked to show I whistled then I've been asked to show how to change color every round um, so I need to go back to the beginning for that because it does look different on the first round than it does the rest of it. So I'm going to show you again then how we change colour and how we edge it and sew in our ends because it's all part of the granny square. So doing it in one solid colour is very, very simple. You just carry on and if you want to, you can end off, as I showed you before, and do your edging. Well, this one, there are two ways that we can change colour with my granny square, because I do mine slightly different as uh, I've shown you how to do um, the seamless corner. So I have two ways that I use to change colour, and I'm going to show you both of them. The more complicated one first, the easier one second. So I'm going to start off with this colour, and I'm just going to push these aside. Now, these are all Aran yarn that I'm doing this for, this tutorial, I mean, because um, it is a little easier when you're first starting off to use a thicker yarn and Aran yarn, four weight across the pond, uh, four weight worsted yarn is what they call it. And we call it Aran. So that is not quite as thick as a chunky yarn, but obviously thicker than ZK. And I think it is good for learning. So we do the same before as before. We start off with the slip knot. So we just make a circle and put the yarn round the back and through and pull it to get our slip knot. Now we've got a very long tail there, but we don't really need that unless you're sewing them in. I always work over them in this round anyway. And there is a bonus to that, which I'll show you when we finish this round. So exactly as before, I'm chaining four. Now, in my previous video and sub the ones before, I did this very slowly. But this one, this is now assuming you've watched those and the last. So if you haven't, then you need to go back. So I'm going to make my ring. There it is. And this is the one I'm going to work in, this one here. And this tail, I'm going to work over it. So I'm going to chain two for my first stitch and do my first two UK trebles or US double crochets to make my first cluster of three. And I'm chaining one, which will be my gap between my threes. Now I'm going to go back in there and I'm working over this yarn, I'm just holding it alongside and it's easy to work over. And I'm going to do one chain, carrying on, still working over the yarn. If I go ahead, pause it. But as I said to you, I think before, it, I find it beneficial to watch the whole thing the first time. And even if I just watch a whole round rather than the whole video and then go back and do it with like rewind it and go back and do it i think that's easier when you're learning so i think this is my last four so if you get to this stage and it is a bit tight you just pull it back a little expose a little bit more of the chain ring and you can fit them all in 
Okay, so is that my fourth? One, two, three, four lots of three. So, okay. Now, in my last uh, video, when I showed you this granny square, it was all one colour, and I showed you the seamless corner, which I will recap then. We yarn over and we go into the top chain. There's our first one and there's our second one. So this is our first two chain that it counts as our first stitch and we do a half treble. This is why you need to watch the other videos before you do this one. So now I would yarn over and pull through. So I have my gap exactly the same as the other sides. Okay, so that was how I did it first. Now I'm going to show you a neat little trick. Now you've worked over your end is if you pull it, just pull it, you can tighten that and you've got, you've closed your hole. So if you wanted to, you could now tie that. Well, you know, what I mean by that is you could work it with a darning needle and um, tighten that down and then hide that tail through there. Um, we'll get to that at the end when I show you what we're doing with the darning needle. So that's just a little trick that if you want to have a much tighter centre. Okay, so here we are. We've done our join to this, this, cha this chain here. Now, if we were to change our colour now, um, this would happen. So with this particular method of changing colour, we start our stitch as normal. We go in, we pull up our loop and we've got the three on our hook and then we put it down and we cut this, leaving a nice tail to work over and we bring in a new colour. I'm going to choose this one. And just bear with me while I get the yarn out. I'll show you this way first, because the other way, well, is easier, but you might want to do that. Okay, so we now need to change colour. So we don't want this getting baggy. So I hold on to it behind with my finger. I just hold on to it and I bring in my new colour, leave a nice long tail. And now I can hold all of it with this finger. So I'm holding this yarn, holding that tail, and I can yarn over and pull through all of those. Now, if we, I would at this stage, turn it over and I would tie off these two ends. If you see these two ends here, that's the one I just cut and this is my new one. And I would tie them off like this personally because I have had them in the past come unraveled. You can do it once, you're going to sew them in, so once is fine or twice is best. But I'm not going to do that now because obviously I want to show you the other way. So if I were to now carry on with my new colour as I had before, and I will do that and show you, I'm going to work over these ends as much as I can. And I'm going to do my next two stitches, which is my half corner. OK, you've got this little line here, which is a bit annoying because as you come round and you do your next three, it hides it a little. But you will always see that little bar of colour where you don't want a little bar of colour. So I'm going to go back. I've just joined my new colour. The way I overcome that is I go into that ring and I pull up a loop and I do a chain through both loops. And then I do one chain and my next two stitches. And that does get rid of it to a certain extent. It's not perfect. Okay, there's still a little line there. But when you come over and you do your next three, it hides it. And because you've gone through with this colour, it, it, does, it does work. But there is a much easier way to change colour every row, every round, if you have, um, if you're going to do that. And that is by simply doing one chain and slip stitching into our top here and then ending our colour. So to end off, we do a chain 
and we pull it to cinch it right down. Hold this tight and you can pull on this and it cinch it down. I'll show you one more time because that'll be the first time I've shown you how you do that. So I've got my chain, there it is. I go into my top chain, there's my first, my second. So I'm going to go in there. I was going in the wrong one anyway, look at that. And I yarn over, I've got my two loops. I pull that one through for my slip stitch. And then I do a chain. And by holding this tight and pulling on this hook, I can cinch that right down and then I can just pull that through and pull it up. So now I've ended that color and I've got my gap between each of my threes. Okay, so that is by far the simplest way. So I'm just gonna cut this one off. Um, I was gonna show you how to cinch it, wasn't I? So maybe I won't. We just have to try our best not to let these ends confuse us because when you're changing each row, you do get a lot of ends when you're changing color. Later on, you might find ways to work over them. But for now, we've just got our circle. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my new color, which is here. And I'm not gonna choose the same, uh, the same gap. I'm not gonna choose this one because I would then have two ends in the one space and that's too many. So I'm just gonna choose another, another gap. It can be this one or it can be this one. And I'm going to insert my hook into that gap and I'm gonna bring in my new color. Now there's lots of different ways you can do it, but by far the simplest is to just tie it. This is the simplest. As time goes by, you might develop other ways of doing it. So we've now tied that in. We can put our hook in. I bring up a loop and I'm ready to go. So that's very simple. I just put my hook in, forget this tail, just get it out of the way. This is my working yarn and I bring up a loop and I'm ready to go. So now I would just do my two chain and my stitches, which are, remember we're going half a corner now, so I'm only doing two. Now, unfortunately, I've just got to drop this and have yet another end dangling around. Until we get further in, you can sew them. So just as before now, I'm going to do my full corner in the next one. I'll do it faster because by now you've done that video about granny squares and so you've practiced hopefully. So my full corner is my three, one chain and then another three in the same place. There we go, there's my full corner. In the next space, another full corner, and I can bring that yarn round, hide it like that, and then work over it. If it's too confusing for you to do that, then just leave it. But once you've pulled it over, you can work over that. I'm a firm believer in doing anything that makes less work for yourself. So I'm doing my corner now in there. Just work over that join and it gets hidden there we are so i'm going into my last full corner i need to pull some yarn to bear with me a second actually it wasn't as bad as i thought i didn't need to pull out so much i was treading on it so <laughs> making it harder for myself okay so i'm going to carry on and do my full corner in here Whatever you're working on, by changing colour every row or every round, you will have all these ends. And unfortunately, there's not really any way around it. So now I'm going to finish off my last part of my first corner. And again, I'm going to do one chain, go into my, there's my first chain, my second, and pull up my loop, slip that stitch, get my yarn, cut off a nice long tail, 
And again, holding this tighter because this is how you control your tension by holding on here. So I've got my loop, I'm gonna do my chain and I'm gonna hold this tight, pull on this, cinch it down, pull it through. And there we are, we've changed color. And now it's the same way every single round. Okay, so we're gonna get our next color. We'll have the blue. Just going to pull out some yarn and try not to tangle my yarns up. Okay, so I've got my blue. And again, I'm gonna choose a different corner. I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna pop my hook in. Remember, you can do it the other way. You just need to practice it. I'm gonna pull that through and I'm just going to give it a tie off. It's the most secure way when you're learning to do this. So I'm gonna put my hook into my gap. There's my gap between my threes. And just with my working yarn, bring up the loop and I'm going to do my first two chain. And I'm gonna finish my corner or my half corner. And now we have our side back to how we were before. So we're just gonna do three in our side. Now we have a corner. And again, if I want to, I can just pull that across and work over it. You don't have to, like I said, it's just purely something that makes it a little bit more Simple for me. If it's too confusing at first, just leave it, sew them in. Well, you, I still sew them in, but it's a lot less work. Did I do a chain? I don't think I did. But incidentally, I may have done actually, I did. Just wasn't a very big one. Incidentally, if you didn't, it's not the end of the world. You can just count them one, two, three, and go in between, and it makes its own space. But just little ways out of it. You don't have to undo things um, all the time if you've made a bit of a mistake. If you've lost, um, if you've miscalculated and you didn't put that chain in, you can just go in between those, and it will make a big space because you're putting in all those stitches, it'll push them apart. Don't recommend you do it all the time but you can get away with it. So we've done our side. I'm going to do the corner now. Nearly there. Last, oh no, it's not the last side. It grows quite quickly. So at the end of this row, round, I'll show you the edge in. And now we're going to do a corner. So our last full corner this time. I need to pull some yarn. Just bear with me one second. Okay. My last side. And then I finish off my first corner. Now this, it was my last row anyway, even on the, the full colour, it's my last row, then I'm just going to do a chain and finish off into that corner. On ev if it, whenever I do it, if it, whatever I've been doing to, to join, my last ever one is always the same. 
one chain, slip stitch into my top chain of my first stitch, like that. Cut off my yarn. Holding this firmly, make a chain, cinch it down, pull it through. So that's how I always end off. So we've got a little square. We're going to pretend now that this is as big as we want our squares. I'm gonna show you how to do the edging and how to sew in your ends. So firstly, you just need to decide, and I've got this kind of off-white color. It's a bit of a cream color. I'm just going to remove all those other yarns before I tangle them all up. So I'll be, I'll just pause it for a second. Okay. So once again, I'm not going to choose the end that I've just done. I'm going to choose another. So that way we've only got the two tails that we need to work over. But again, I'm going to go in and join my new yarn exactly the same way as before. So I'm going to bring in my new colour and just tie that off. Always leave a nice long tail so that you can get rid of it easily. It's best to uh, be a bit generous when you come to sewing them in. So now I'm going to put my hook in and bring up my loop exactly the same. Now it just depends, you have to decide what stitch you want to do around this edge. And it depends on the, what you're making and what you want it to look like. So imagine this were a blanket and I wanted to sew my squares together. I would choose a UK double crochet which is a single crochet in the US. If it were a blanket and I wanted to crochet them together I would choose to do it as a half treble. Now the principle is exactly the same. From this point you will do a chain and I always cinch it down a little bit so it's not in the way and if we were doing a half treble we would now just do two only in this space. Okay, just two. I will show you again in a moment with the other stitch, with the, with the double crochet. So pull this aside because this is your first stitch and you want to go in there. And I'm working over my tail. You see, just hold that alongside and work over it. Less sewing, got to be a good thing. And we're going to go in every single stitch all the way along working over the tail, just holding it alongside. And it's ever so simple. We just go in every single one, all the way along until we get to the corner. And the corners is actually where it differs. I'm still only doing half a corner on my first one and I will show you why when we get all the way around there. So this is my first full corner. I'm not gonna work over this tail, not gonna pull it across and there's a reason for that. So I'm just going to finish off with three in this corner. One, two, three. That's now how we do the corner. We don't do three chain three, we just do three in the corner. Now this stitch here, it does look different, but as you can see, this is where you've, we've, you've ended off. You need to go into this one and it will look different from all the other stitches. But again, I'm gonna work over this tail. So I'm just gonna hold it behind so it's not confusing me. And then I'm gonna go into the next one. And then in the next and work over the tail. You can always pull it tighter if it's in the way and you don't want to see it there to confuse you. And we're gonna go all the way to the next corner. Now, when I'm doing a tutorial, ordinarily I would pause it and let you catch up with me. But I think it's important when you're learning, we're at the corner, sorry, I'm talking, um, when you're learning that you don't get left and, and wonder what's happening. So I've gone in every stitch along, 
I'm at my next corner, still working over this tail because there's tail there, and I'm going to do three in the corner, just as before. One, two, three. Again, you want to pull that a little bit aside so you can get in this first one. Just move that out of the way. I am still working over it though. You don't have to, but you'll see why it's important when you've got a lot of ends to sew in that you can actually save yourself some bother with occasionally sewing them in. So I'm going to go and show you how it looks when we've done a little bit more. Pull that out. You see, that's how that looks with the edging. It's not a big stitch, so it's quite nice. Now, if I were going to be crocheting these together, I'd, I'd need this stitch because otherwise you would not see very much at all of the UK double crochet, which is the single in the US. You wouldn't see very much of that stitch at all, or the colour. So that's why I prefer this stitch for um, crocheting them together. Now, my end is completely gone, as you can see hidden and so is the white one so that's saved me a little bit of mess to clear up but some people love sewing in ends I've I kind of don't get it <laughs> it's a horrible job there's far too many of them I'm at the corner again so I'm doing my three only in the corner I've got my stitch you can just see it so if you have to, pull it aside. And we can't have much further to go now. Good. And we're going to go into every single one. And I'll show you what to do when we get to the corner. Nearly there. I'm in my last stitch and we're back at the corner. So I've done two. I need to finish it off with my last one. And then I can go into the this one here. That's the chain, we ignore it. There's our first stitch, there's our second. I'm gonna slip stitch into that stitch there. And I will finish in the center of my three. And that's why I like to still do half a corner when I get to this, because if I wanted to, I could end off now. In fact, I will. No, I won't, because I want to show you how to do it with the um, smaller stitch. Um, so anyway, I would now do my chain, cinch it down and pull it through exactly the same. So that's how we end off. And I'm kind of dead center, which makes it good. So if you were finishing now, you could leave a very, very long tail and cut it and use that to sew your squares together. Actually, I'm gonna to have to show you, aren't I? Um, how to show you, sew your squares together. So I can, we have to do a complete new square. Otherwise, I've got one. Okay, so I'm going to do my, my chain, cinch it down and pull it through. So that is the end. That's how you end off the square. So now if we turn it over, it's not as bad as it could be because we haven't got any tails from this last two rounds apart from this one, which would be my end. So what do we do? We get a darning needle. This is the worst job when it comes to granny squares. Now, some of them I have worked over. I'm gonna start at the top. Some of them I've worked over, so it's not as bad as it could be. So I'm, I'm going to hold on to this and I'm going to not just go straight back through because as I've worked over this, it would undo it, um, if you see what I mean. I've already worked over this way, so to go all the way through would be to undo it. So I'm going to catch this, because it's this colour, I'm going to catch this stitch, then I'm going to go all the way through this corner with my darning needle and come out the other side and pull that all the way through. And it's not gonna go all the way through because I caught that stitch. 
and then I'm going to just snip it off. And when you're snipping it off, if you pull it slightly, then that end will disappear. Not too much, obviously, but it will disappear into that. So we've got rid of that one. Again, I've worked over some of this one and it's advisable to leave a nice long tail, as I said before, so that you've got enough yarn to work with because otherwise you've got to put your needle through and then join <laughs> the yarn to it because there's not enough to get back through. So this one, this is a different colour, so I don't really want to catch that. So I'm going to catch this. See, by catching some of that, I'm not going to go all the way through it. So this is really me just going back through the other side. I've already been through it once. I'm just going back through the other side. And again, so that's twice. I can pull this slightly, any tiny slightly. Cut that off. And they're disappearing thick and fast. Let's do another one. We'll do this one, it's a nice big one. Okay. You need a nice big eye in your needle for this. Okay, so that again, the same colour as this one, so I'm going to catch a little bit of this stitch here. Just don't just, it doesn't disfigure the stitch, so you're perfectly fine doing that. But I'm just going to feed it all the way through to the other end and then pull it through. Again, it won't go all the way. And I'm just going to pull it slightly so that end disappears into that corner. So that's how we do it. OK, um, I'll get rid of this one. Now, this one's a bit tighter. I didn't leave such a long end, but I still think it'll work out. But if it didn't, this is what I mean. It's hard to get the end through. So sometimes you have to put the actual darning needle in before you thread it. But this one's fine. I've, got, I've left enough space. So as it's this colour, just going to catch some of that so that it doesn't pull through the other side. OK. Last one, apart from the centre. Last one of our joins, anyway. Didn't get that very well, did I? Have to be careful you don't snip the wrong thing. I left this one because um, that would have been my sewing, sewing one. OK, so if you're happy with the little hole in the centre, that's fine. But if not, if you hold on to it with your fingers, so it's like this, and you give it a tug, you can close it. And if you wanted it closed like that, you then just secure it now. Personally, I like the little hole because with a granny square, you've got the holes. So I think the centre hole looks nice. But if it was something you didn't want, you now just make a knot. So that with this pulled tight, we go back, just catch a couple of these stitches. This is the reverse side. So we kind of make a loop. And now what we want to do is we want to feed this through it like that. And then we can pull it down really tight. So that's knotted now. Make sure you've got enough yarn. And you can then just work this through this centre like that to get rid of the end. That's why it's advisable to leave a nice long tail. Okay. That's the last one, and we can snip it off. So it's nicely buried. So all of our all of our ends are gone, apart from this one. And this one is easier to dispose of because you've got all these stitches along here to bury it with. But that's the granny square, that's finished. Now I'm gonna make another one, so I will pause it, and I'm gonna come back and show you how we sew it together. Okay, so I've got my another square and I'm nearly finished doing my last stitch, finishing my corner. I'm going to slip stitch into that one there and get my hook in. 
I'm going to bring my yarn through as usual, but this time I'm going to leave a nice extra long tail and pull it through. Actually, no, I did that wrong, didn't I? Nice long tail. And I'm going to do my chain, cinch it down and pull it through. Okay, I made a mess of that one, but you get the gist. So now I'm finished in the center of my square. Okay, so we move all this stuff out of the way. And we've now got our first square and our second square where we're finished off right in the center by going into this one here. Okay, so we're going to thread the needle with the very, very long end. And that way we haven't got another end to sew in and straight away we're using this one. So we're going to use this one to sew. Now what we want to do is we want to go into our very sort of middle stitch of our corner, which is here. And the corresponding one on the other side, which is here. Okay, so we're going to go through both of those, both the two loops, and you can hold it flat and just pull that through. Okay, so then we want to go into the next one. So we've gone into this one. We're going to go into this one here. And we're going to pull that. And then we're going to go into the next one. And into, we're already in this one, so we're going to go into the next one. And we're just going to sew all the way down, going from one to the other. So we hold them nice and flat. Let's go down a little bit. Okay, so we've, not, we've got them flat like this. We've got them side by side. These are the ones we've done. We're going to go into the next one, those two loops, and up to those two loops. And then we're just going to pull it and we're going to go into the next one and the next one. Make sure we're going through both two loops. And we're going to just keep going all the way down. Sewing them together. And as you can see, you get a nice kind of neat join sewing your squares together. We're working obviously on the right side. You can see the two loops and the two loops. Incidentally, I have never sewn together squares that are Aran. This is my very first ever Aran square. So we go all the way down, putting them together. Nice and simple. And then when we get to the, the bottom, I like to finish off um, just uh, in the center. I don't want my yarn to pull through there. We're almost there. And um, I do that because I want to start in the first stitch and end in the first stitch. Uh, say first stitch, the stitch in the, you know, the very first the third one in the corner, so it's the center. So I consider that the first stitch. So now I've done that, what I need to do, I've gone all the way down and I've sewn them together. I want to finish on the wrong side. So I've kind of come out over this side. I'm going to go in over here. So I'm now on the back and I can kind of end this off. So to do that, I don't want to pull it too tight because I don't want it to bunch too much, but I can get a couple of loops like this. There's my end. I'm not too far away from my end. You see what I mean? And then I'll just go through these two loops like that. And just as before, it's got a bit bunched up, sorry. There we go, pull it through. Just as before, there's my end. I can go through there and cinch that down and make my knot. OK, so that is how we sew it together. Now, I'm not going to secure it because I'm going to undo that 
and I'm going to show you how we can crochet them together. But that'll be for the next video. So um, for now, that's it. If you want to go ahead and practice changing colours each row, of course, you don't have to do each row. Um, I've shown you how to sew in and how to make a nice tight um, closure or one that's not and how to sew them together. So I think that's enough for this video. I don't want to overload you. So the next one I will um, show you um, is how, on as far as granny squares are concerned, the next granny square video, I'll show you how to crochet them together and we'll do a few more and we'll do that. But for the next video, I'm going to show you how to do some shaping because I need to, um, I'm going to do a few tutorials. We'll carry on with this and we'll do something with squares, but I also want to do this, I'll show you. I've made some uh, pumpkins, which um, I'm going to do as a tutorial. Now for this, you're going to need um, a couple of sticks. Some people use cinnamon sticks, but I got these from the garden and I washed them off and they look authentic. Well, apart from the fact that they're crocheted, they don't really look that authentic if you think about it. But I've stuffed these with um, toy wadding. But if you don't have any, then most of us have plenty of this stuff that might be left over and not used anymore for anything. You can always stuff it with yarn if you want to. Um, but I'm, this, believe it or not, although they are different sizes, was exactly the same tutorial. I just stuffed this one more than I stuffed that one. So you can make them any size you want. Um, they're easy, but I do need to show you how we're going to do this shaping. So to get us up to that um, kind of level, I need to do a video about that. So I'm going to do that on the next one, and then we'll come back and we'll do crocheting the granny squares together. So thank you for watching. If it's been a little bit uh, full on or difficult, then you can go back, just, you know, take it slow. You don't have to do it all at once, but um, it's there for a reference. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.